Can a website leak data? Well, yes. Depending on how the website is configured or built or structured or put out publicly on the internet, there might be some endpoints or some URLs or locations that you can access that give data that shouldn't really be seen or made available to the public. Let's see a great example of this with the recent Capture the Flag challenge and a challenge called My Chemical Romance, or MCR as an acronym, right? It says, hey, when I was a young boy, I made a My Chemical Romance fan page, and here is the link to that website. We can go visit it, and there it is. Here's my favorite band My Chemical Romance. This text is awful to read. It says, hey, you know, this is a little bit of a background on that band. And everything that's really here is just simply YouTube videos. Uh, there's no other links or navigation on the web page. There's nothing more to do other than play different songs from My Chemical Romance. If you wanted to right click and view the page source or hit control U on your keyboard, you could take a look at the HTML for this application, but really there's nothing here to look at other than, again, these links to YouTube. With that, there isn't a whole lot left for us to work with. There isn't a whole lot to go off of, but don't forget, if we're working with a website and it's being served via HTTP, that hypertext transfer protocol, maybe we should dig into some of the headers or some of the information that could be presented as our web browser, the client, asks the server for this information. With that, we can open up the browser developer tools. Usually is the hotkey F12 on your keyboard. Now, if I open this up, you'll actually be able to see the network tab is open here. Now, bear in mind, this only shows things that are loaded as you've opened this. If we want to restart and actually see as the web page is loaded, we'll probably have to clear out everything that's present now with this trash can icon and then perform a request or reload the page. You can hit F5, you can do whatever you'd like or just click this button here, but check it out. Now we have more data flowing through here. In this very, very first get request, you can see the domain is over to My Chemical Romance and the website we're visiting. Note over here on the right hand side, we can actually get a little bit more information on the headers that are returned back out to us. So I'll zoom in a little bit here. This is returning a 304 status code for not modified. So our browser cache is cool with just giving this page back to us. But take a look at the headers here because one of these sticks out. You might notice, ooh, the server is simple nginx, but we actually have an interesting little breadcrumb here. The source control management type we can see is mercurial SCM. Now, if you aren't familiar with any of those words like mercurial or source control management, I've also heard SVC or source version control. You can think of it like Git because that's exactly what it is, right? It's control over different versions of your software or your source code. It's keeping track of the commits or the changes or modifications that you make to your program, your application, and your source code. So interesting oddball here is that, okay, we aren't seeing this kind of at least keep tracked and, and maintained with Git, but we are seeing it with Mercurial. We can dig into that if you haven't seen it before. Even if we keep this super duper easy, like, hey, I'm gonna copy and paste, right click whatever here to slap it in Google what the Mercurial SCM is, check it out. Mercurial is a free distributed and source control management tool. It efficiently handles projects of any size and offers an easy and intuitive interface. I don't know how well you can see the quick start here, but note that, hey, you basically just clone a repository, make changes, add files, commit, and push, exactly like you would with Git. Note, however, the command is not git, it is hg. I think that's the symbol in the periodic table for mercury, so that's kind of the joke with mercurial. So this clues us in on some interesting things. Perhaps the website is actually being served out of a mercurial repository or a big folder and file directory structure that just has all of the source code for the web page and it's just plopped right open on Nginx. Now, let me draw a parallel here because again, we're seeing this header, but if it were to actually be a GitHub repository present on this page, you you might be able to actually go to a dot git with a forward slash to denote that it is a folder and on some web pages where it is publicly published by a git repository you might see a forbidden because you aren't allowed to do directory indexing or it might just spit out all the potential files under that folder in this case it's a meme it's a joke because again we're not seeing a dot git and git being used as a source version control but mercurial just for your learning there is a whole lot of awesome tools available online where you might be able to actually pull down and grab the data out of publicly accessible Git repositories if they are found on a web page. There is a great one in the Git tools presented by Internet Wash. Internet Wash? I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know how to say that.
One really, really cool one is the Git Dumper utility. This tool can be used to download as much as possible from the found.git repository from web servers, even that do not have directory listing enabled. It's a small command line tool, a little bash script. You just pass along whatever target you'd like with the destination directory you want to pull this all down to, and that way you're basically cloning the repository. With that, you can basically see the source code of the web page, or at least everything that's present there, and you might be able to see some of the changes that the developer or the author has made. Ergo, leaking data. But remember, we're not using Git in this scenario. We are up against a mercurial SCM or source control management, and that relies on HG, not the Git command line utility. But I wonder if we could just actually clone the repository, even if we just point it at the website. So let me open up a Linux terminal here on my Kali Linux virtual machine, and I'm going to move into the LACTF directory, make a directory for my chemical romance, and I want to use the HG tool. Now again, this is mercurial, and we don't always have that installed. We are gonna have to install it with sudo apt install mercurial. Kali was super duper nice and just said, hey, do you want to do that? Let's do it. I'll hit yes and enter. Okay, now that that finished downloading, do I have HG? Looks like I do. I do have the Mercurial Distributed SCM. Okay, I'm gonna hit Q to get out of that menu page, and I wanna go ahead and HG clone, and I'll paste in the URL of this website. Again, this is HTTPS, and we're just wanting the root of the web page, nothing following it, and I'll hit enter here, and it looks like I need a destination path. Okay, so let's put it into, I guess, output, maybe? And there we go, pulled stuff down. What do I have here? I do have outputs, and I suppose I probably should have put that into the My Chemical Romance folder. Move into that directory, and now I have my output directory here. Let's actually change directory into that output directory, and let's see what we got. Before we go any further, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. I'll be honest, I write bad code. Even though I try to hunt for vulnerabilities in lots of other software, I still have vulnerabilities even in my own projects. Everyone does. And that's why I use Sneak to scan for vulnerabilities in code, dependencies, containers, and configuration files. And Sneak helps find and fix those vulnerabilities in real time. You can try it and see for yourself. You can sign up for free with my link below, import your repositories, and sit back and let Sneak do the work for you. It'll find the flaws and vulnerabilities in your own applications. Check out this prototype pollution vulnerability that Sneak uncovered. We can see more details about the code path to introduce this vulnerability, and even learn more about this kind of vulnerability, or any others, if you check out the Sneak Learn Lesson. I've referenced the Sneak Learn Lessons and their vulnerability database a ton, especially in assessments and penetration testing, and even during Capture the Flag competitions. From there, you can see an explanation of the flaw, proof of concept exploit code and attack demonstrations, and most importantly, how to mitigate this vulnerability. But the best part? Sneak helps you fix this vulnerability with a single click. It'll automatically open a pull request so you can just merge and move on. So seriously, check out Sneak. It's crazy how many vulnerabilities could be affecting your projects and you don't even realize. Take advantage of their resources and learning material and learn all about the different vulnerabilities out there. It's completely free and you can sign up right now with my link in the video description. Huge thanks to Sneak for sponsoring this video. Ooh, a little Gerard Way 2001.py, so a Python script and the static folder here. So let me go ahead and just run tree in my current directory listing. Looks like that is simply the Python script again and everything present in the static folder. Probably just images and CSS and HTML, nothing all that interesting. But I am super curious about that Python script. So I'm gonna open that up with Sublime Text, my text editor. And this is it. This is the application. Looks like it is going to be a Flask application, a little micro framework, a little web service in Python here. Simply returning out the index with a URL route along with a 404 error handler. And all we do is just get these images as they would from static and then return with the little mercurial SCM header that we included here. That's pretty nice. Hey, maybe just a little clue in for the CTF challenge, but there is no flag present in this source code. So that's not super duper helpful for us, but we probably want to dig into what other things has HG mercurial as a source code version control manager, whatever we want to call it. What has that been tracking? If we dig into the help menu for HG, we could probably see a diff of the repository and see what differences there might be. So I'm curious, can we do that across everything? 
Because normally I would do like a git log or a git show. Ooh, it looks like actually HG does have a log. Show revision history of the entire repository or files. So let's try that HG log. What can we see here? Ooh, okay, so one change set and a second change set. Ooh, there's I Love My Chemical Romance and I decided to keep my favorite song a secret. Um, okay, so that sounds like a flag might be present there. We want to dig into that little commit or change set in whatever mercurial speak there is. Can I do that with just an HG diff? What do I pass into that? Uh, does it take like the change set as an argument? If I pass that, no such file directory. Okay, so that means changes on a specific file. How about gerardway.py? Uh, doesn't give me anything. How do I do that? Let's go ask Uncle Google. Uh, HG show changes in commits. How about that? Does that work? Easy way to see changes from last commit. Okay, stack overflow to the rescue. HG log shows us the recent ones. You wanna use HG diff tac c tip or HG tip tac p. Shorter only works for the tip. Uh, how about everything? You can use relative revision numbers for the change option. That's tac c. Uh, is there anything that can just show me like everything? Are you, let's just try a couple of these. Let's do HG diff. And what was that? Taxi tip. How about that? Ooh, okay. Here's some interesting. Oh, the flag is right in front of my face. Okay. <laughs> so I guess because there's only one commit, hey, you could probably track that all down or see the changes or whatever the tip or the head, I think, is in the equivalent git speak. So all they've done was main changes in the index.html. I'm assuming. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. That was probably something different. Also, yeah, that's if I were to scroll down, it would show that probably just being added. So the original flag that was added here was a Python Flask comment. Uh, Python, you can use the octothorp or the hashtag for the comment there. And that is the flag. Don't drink mercurial from a flask. That's cutesy. Those were the changes made to this application, but ultimately that is all we were looking for, trying to dig back into what data was being leaked by this website because it was published with a HG or Mercurial website backing it. That repository was put publicly out on the open internet, and that is what allowed us to dig into some more data. So hey, moral of the story here, uh, don't publish your entire GitHub repository or HG Mercurial source code control version management system out on the open internet. That is how you leak in information that's how data or files that you shouldn't have publicly accessible get out onto the internet. Uh, hopefully you don't have to run into that all that often. Use some staging servers, do whatever you do for access control, everything that's good in that security sense. With that, I'm done rambling. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. See you in the next video.